Since 1996, the Valley Junior Warriors have been the premier junior hockey organization in New England, producing some of the best hockey talent whose presence can be felt in both the college and professional ranks. Walking on a dream This is our 26th season of junior hockey here at Valley. Uh, the reason I wanted to come here was it has the potential to be the best place to play junior hockey in all of, not only New England, but the East Coast. It's got a great facility, fantastic ownership, great location. All the resources that are needed to be successful are here under our roof. So last year wasn't my best year. I don't want to burn any bridges, but uh, so I was looking to move on. Just wasn't the right fit for me. So I got in co contact with one of my old coaches. Got in contact with Coach McGrath. Came to a skate in, I believe it was April, like the beginning of April. Fell in love with the process, fell in love with the coaching staff, and ever since then I wanted to be a Valley Junior Warrior. I was actually planning on not playing hockey anymore after my 18 year year. I just wasn't having fun with it anymore. And I was just ready to start new things. And I got a phone call over the summer. Uh, two years ago and it was Coach McGrath and he talked me into coming out and just trying to skate and I immediately fell in love with it again. He was so positive. All the coaching staff was so positive. The drills were fun. I had fun. It was a great time and I looked at my parents. I was like, all right, let's give it a shot and it turned out for the best. Well, honestly, it's kind of a long story, but obviously I knew Coach Heigl from Hoosack School. It's where I played my junior and senior year of high school. Uh, he kept texting me and texting me, honestly, like haunting me about coming to play just to check it out. I came to one ID skate. I love the drills that we were doing. All the boys were so welcoming. I think it was actually Christmas time last year when I came in and everybody was like, hey, where are you from? Welcome to the team. I wasn't even there full time and they were treating me like I was, I've been there since the start, you know? Despite the organization's rich history, the first two seasons in Coach McGrath's tenure with the team have been anything but easy. So playing under COVID was obviously not ideal. We couldn't play any of the teams out of the state. We had to stay in state and it was just tough. We, we hated each other. So we played five teams, I believe, and we played each other numerous times. And it was just a battle all year and with injuries and stuff like that too. It was yeah, it was a big deal. Uh you know, showing up to the rink, having to wear a mask, playing through it. It was uh, some adversity that really affected our team, I believe. Oh, playing under COVID last year was, uh, you know, a lot of people thought it was hardships. And yeah, we didn't have our locker room and we had to wear face masks. But there were so many leagues that were shut down that I, I kind of look at it as a positive that we were able to play. Like, we had so many good things happen. And in year two of, of the new coaching staff here like we were able to improve the program and get 15 kids committed to college so you know for me yes COVID stunk but I thought it was a heck of a year. It's the unfortunate reality in hockey that a player will sustain many injuries over the course of a season. Most of the time hockey players choose to play despite their injuries. So last year after Christmas break, we just getting into the swing of things, did like a week of practice and jumped right into a game at the Worcester Railers and I took a hit, this, my left knee folded in and I heard a pop and a snap thing and knew it wasn't good right away and I just needed to get off the ice. After everything settled in, I was obviously sad. I wanted to be out there with the boys every day, putting the work in, grinding, going to war with them and it just sucked. I was on crutches, like I went through a whole thing of, um, 
anxiety, depression, it sucked. Like boys were very good about that though. They always, they came to my house, hung out with me whenever I couldn't get to the rink. They would always boost my confidence up and keep a smile on my face and it's just very good kids. They're awesome. So physical therapy was, a, oh, it, was a, it was a ride. It was, I think I did three full months of it and three times a week. Uh, she was a very nice lady. She helped me out through everything. Um, we went as slow as I could and then instantly she was like, got me right into the heavy weights, running, um, stretches, all that stuff. And she was overall an unreal person. Getting on the ice, it was just only the only thing I could do was smile. It was uh, it was awesome. Like I haven't been skating for since January second, I believe. And um, first time I got back on the ice was Aprilish, and it just felt amazing. Like didn't, even just the summer skills was awesome. I I just couldn't get a smile off my face. So scouting and recruiting this past year is a lot, obviously a lot different because we weren't able to go to as many games. We were lucky that the year before that, you know, as a staff, we'd gone over to 200 games. Uh, this past summer, we really had to rely upon our network, you know, different uh, family advisors, different prep school coaches, high school coaches, different college coaches that trust us to, you know, push players our way. The way we kind of go about it, at least the way I've learned to go about it, is just you shoot them straight and you be honest, you know. This is who we are, this is what we offer, this is what we can do for you, and you know, this is what, you know, this is where you can come and grow as a person and as a player, but a person more, you know, more importantly. And, and then it's, honestly, it's on, the, it's on them to make their decision. We are thrilled with the returners that we have. Uh, on our EHL team, we've got you know, four forwards, uh, one defenseman and two goalies. Uh, back from last year. Very, very lucky to have that's the first time in my tenure that we've had that. Uh, Nick Serafin, Jack Wren, Aaron Kumu, uh, Billy Hartnett, uh, and David Zerner up from the EHLP team. You know, we're looking forward to big things for them. They're our leaders on and off the ice. They know what's expected uh, and they're totally invested in this program. Uh, Daniel Demchuk uh, on defense is as steady as they come. We're real excited about him as, as a 20 year old. And then of course, Noah Dorsey uh, back on from EHL and then Tucker Hansen up from our premier team. Both 20 year old local goalies, great kids. They had great summers. So really, really looking forward to those guys a, taking huge leadership roles, and B, finishing out the process of achieving their goals. In the middle of May, potential Valley Junior Warriors ascend to Haverhill Valley Forum, hoping to impress the coaching staff enough to earn a spot on their roster. All right, hey, we'll get started. We're a few minutes early. But that's okay. The quicker we, st we get started, the quicker we can get out of here. You guys can get to bed, get ready for tomorrow. <clears throat> for those of you who don't know me, Coach McGrath, I'm the general manager and the head coach, GM of the whole program, and head coach of the EHL team. You see behind me a sign. It's got 13 names of guys that are committed to NCAA programs for next year. Those 13 guys all earn these commitments this season while playing for us. All right, we've got some pretty good schools up there. Colby, Skidmore, SUNY Brockport, Westfield, I'm sorry, Worcester, UMass Dartmouth, Riviera, Stonehill, Anna Maria, Albertus Magnus, 
Went with the Institute of Technology, post-university, St. Michael's College. All right, 13 guys. We got one more guy that's still waiting to make a decision. He didn't make the cut on the sign, but we'll add, we'll add him to the, uh, the website once it's done. So we're gonna finish at 14. Last year, we finished at nine. So in two years, since we took over the program, we're at 23. So essentially next year, we're gonna have 23 freshmen playing NCAA college hockey. Spread out amongst different conferences, Division II and Division III. That is the number one reason why you wanna come here. You want help, you want assistance, you want guidance to help you reach your goals of playing college hockey. What we did this past summer was, you know, we created our combine series, so we brought players in for a 48 hour period where we put them in different learning environments and got to really know them. Uh, and I think that is what has really propelled us to be even more prepared on day one than we've ever been before. Cutting players is never fun, um, you know, especially when it's a good kid, good grades, good family. You know, letting letting a player know that you don't have a spot for them is always it's it's like breaking up with someone, especially when you when you find that you like them so much. Um, you know, we tend to do it earlier uh, because I want to give the players an opportunity to go find a, another home. You know, instead of you know, dragging a lot of kids to training camp in September uh, and then, you know, telling them on September 15th that we don't have a home for them. So we did at all four of our combines this summer, you know, April, May, June, and July, we told players that who we didn't feel were good for our program or just appropriate for our program that we didn't have a home for them. And, uh, and we wanted to give them as much time as possible. We're getting three guys sucked down low, and then we're then one of our D is pinching, and we're just giving up odd man rushes. They're they're flying a guy, and we've given up a couple odd man rushes because they're flying a guy, but a, a bunch of the odd man rushes started in the offensive zone by us not having a good F three when we didn't have possession. I don't mind when we get possession, F three gets involved in the cycle, going to the net, whatever. That's how we try to create offense. But when we don't have possession of the puck, we got to have an F3 high. Chowder Cup's always a, it's a catch-22. You want to win the tournament, right? Like, if the, all hockey players, teams, coaches, we, we wouldn't do this if we didn't want to win. But for us, the biggest thing is we, we're trying to identify players that could be potential candidates for our team. Uh, so really, our number one goal is to just learn about the players as much as possible. Obviously, if we can make it to Sunday, then we get extra opportunities to see them. You know, we're playing with house money at that point. Fuck me up and make me just go crazy. Addicted to the pain that you just made me love. I'm fiending for you touching on the daily. You're the only one that I want. The first time was chowder and um, my knee was obviously beat up still. And um, took a lot to get back into it. It was sore but I just had to keep doing the stretches, doing the right things to keep it moving, and it was, it was very good, I thought. We feel really good. We've got great depth up front and on D and in net. You know, I don't know how many superstars that we have, and I'm okay with that. You know, and, and I'm sure one or two will emerge, uh, but you look at the teams that are successful at every level, and it's rarely 
done with superstars. It's done with depth throughout the lineup, uh, players that can play in multiple uh, situations, uh, and players that you know truly pull for one another. In late August, the Warriors are back in town and ascend to their home rink, the Haverhill Valley Forum. Going to the training camp, I was excited to see. I knew Coach was bringing in a good team. We were in contact a lot this summer. So I was aware of some of the guys coming in. I was really excited to see, to watch um, Claude McGrath really, again, work out those kinks that we had last year. And, and it was clear right from the jump. There was a clear plan. Expectations were clear, and it was great to see everybody jump on board right away. So going into training camp, I'm expecting to for us to like gel together really well because there's a lot of chatter going around in the locker room already and it seems like guys are starting to get along pretty well. It doesn't really seem like there's anyone that's too quiet. It doesn't really seem like there's anyone who isn't really there to just belong. Uh, for the team training camp, I just want to see the team bond together. A lot of new guys, but there's some veterans from last year. I just want the team to come together as a whole so we can buzz in for the rest of the year. Going to training camp, I was just ready to see all the boys and um, meet everyone and uh, just see them all on the ice, just um, get chemistry together. And I just, wanted to, I just wanted to let them know from the get-go that I wanted to win the season. Three Cs, all right? It is the cornerstone. It's the foundation of everything we're going to work on this year. Compete, communicate, connected. Whatever we do, whether it's a team meal, whether it's a four check, whether it's a bus ride, practice, off ice, the three C's will be prevalent and present in every single thing that we do. All right, live it, love it, eat it up. So three C's for us, compete, communicate and connect. They are what we believe in, in every single thing that we do. And we, there's also a saying that we've, we've created is one team, one family, O-T-O-F. Uh, as we have two junior teams under our umbrella, our EHL and our EHL premier teams. But we want all of our players to be treated as one larger group. Uh, every single day and they push each other it's been uh, it's been fantastic thus far in the three weeks of camp that we've had but the three C's everything that we do we will incorporate the three C's and it'll bring us closer it'll bring us uh, more together but more together in a more efficient way uh, so that we have more success down the road Four lines for Nikki. Vets get in the front so we know what we're doing. Goalies get the so puck out. Sexy, uh, Let's be loud here. Let's be loud. Let's go. Chemistry is really what you're looking for, right? It's if, if two or three players work well together, that should show itself. If players don't work well together, that also should show itself. So it'll help us start to create our lines, our D pairs. Uh, and obviously, yeah, we want to see them compete. We want to see them work hard. Told you I wouldn't be long. That was last November. Now December's almost gone. I'd apologize, but I don't realize what I'm doing wrong. I never know. I was trying to find it yesterday. I kept looking up dry force. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. It's 110 for 30 days. Are you serious? Really?
yeah, dude. Patty, let's get Sorry, us man, get us right. a discount that's code. A, a no so I was pretty excited. You know, obviously it was exciting to get back. It was the first time I really played game speed in a long time. We did pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't pull pull together a win. Um, but I think I think uh, I played with Jerry and, and Renner, and I think we worked out our kinks of the line because ever since that we really started to click and understand each other and started to get some real chemistry going. Do you want me? Should I just pop it forward? You want to go? I'm gonna try to go forward. All right, I think it's one nothing. No, tied one one. Blue came out pretty hot. Kind of, kind of took off the middle of the game. I think that's where we, why that goal went in. But I think Blue's gonna come out hot. It's gonna be a tough day to be white in about, about seven minutes. Right, Doris? Fuck. It's more of a see what chemistry has a team or the line in general, because it was both teams were mixed. So I felt my line, me, Renner, and Seraphin, we 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 played well, but. As the week went on, after that scrimmage, we knew what each other were capable capable of. So after that, I felt like we gelled instantly. It was a rough day for Blue. We had great coaching, had all the pieces, just couldn't put it together. Next time will be a lot different. It was over two weeks since our, our Blue-White game. It was, the guys were starting to get frustrated. They hadn't hit anyone else or been hit by anyone else. They'd just been practicing. So that was a big one because it was just nice to finally see a foreign opponent. My expectations were really high, honestly. I was, I, I felt it in my spirit that we were winning that game, no doubt. I, it's the most prepared I've ever felt as a team going into a game. Expectations were very high. I just, I wanted to, I wanted to just beat them down and I just wanted them to, fear us right off the bat and I just wanted to hammer it right to him and show the show the league that we're coming and we're going to we're going to keep coming. Great day to have a day. Here we go. Uh, shout out mom, shout out dad. Love you guys. Sorry for uh, swearing so much today. I just know it's going to happen. No stick hand out. That's a stick hand. Yep. Oh. Bar snizzle. I feel like a psychopath. I'm just talking to myself this whole time, just trying to be entertaining. Oh! Yeah, give me that! Smell you, D. Oh! Just take it. What are you doing over here? Alright. Timmy Barrel. I like that. I like that. I feel so executive right now. It's kind of sick. It's just, I'm gonna get so exposed because I don't know all the lyrics, so they're gonna just hear me belting and then just be like, eh, 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 for like five minutes. Basis. We know. Oh, wait, shit. We know. 
I've never seen you express any emotion. You were just like. Today's a good day to really put everything that we've been working towards to use. Okay, get to know one another. All right, it's important. I know we've been going for two and a half weeks now. All right, but we can always get to know each other a little bit better. All right, have fun today. Let's work our asses off. Let's stick to our systems. Okay, and when shit hits the fan, because it will. Let you know now that it will. Settle down, grab a guy in the jersey, make sure he can't score. All five guys do that on the ice. The goaltender standing up, he's confident. We'll settle it right down. Extra communication today. Okay, be loud, be proud, be happy. All right, Coach Claw. Repeat every single kid. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's what's going to get us two points today. It's fucking oh, Set the tone for the rest of the fucking year today. Right now, fucking compete. Warriors on three. One, two, three! Warriors! The first half was a little shaky, but we, it was great to see us snap back from adversity, which was great to see. I mean, it, that's, I mean, that's the best feeling, coming back as the underdog, right? During the game, first period, kind of shaky, getting off the rust off, just seeing how everyone else played. But once we came out of uh, the half, we played well, we played our game, got the lead, got the W. Everybody is just trying to bury one, get that W, and I guess it just so happened to be me because I was in the right place at the right time and made a good shot. It's pretty, pretty unreal feeling getting the game-winning goal, your first scrimmage here. I thought we performed awesome. I um, it's a lot better than what everyone expected for the first real scrimmage, and um, the chemistry was definitely there, and we hemmed them down. I definitely thought it was a much more crisp, much more systematic second period where everybody was working together. The bench chatter was awesome. Everybody was positive. There was no negativity at all. It was just a good environment to play in. We were able to make some adjustments in the half, and then we, you know, we scored two goals. Ultimately, came from behind uh, to get the win, uh, and it was it was good to have the guys cheer and, and kind of celebrate a little bit and, and just gain a little confidence early in the season. Team success, I'd look to honestly make it to April. That's, a, that's the first step. Honestly, I think we have the depth needed, 
and I think that all the boys are really gelling together well. We have really good team chem. Um, and I think that's what's going to take us all the way is our depth and our team chem. Team, I want to make it to April. I want to be at the end of the year, Frozen Finals, lifting that championship trophy at the end of the year. Success is always a tricky one because it's so much of junior hockey is individual success, individual achievement. But our biggest thing is, yes, we would like to make a deep run in the playoffs. If that happens, anything can happen. We could win a championship. We are going to be there in April this year. With that's not a I wish or I hope, I know that we're going to be able to pull it together. Well, again, last year our record isn't what we want it to be, but I think I don't think the league knows what's coming for them this year. Junior hockey is an opportunity that not many hockey players are given the chance to experience. For most hockey players, they see it as a stepping stone to get to the next level and play college hockey. But along the way, they soon realize that, as well as chasing their dreams, they are forming lifelong bonds and friendships with strangers who have let the sport of hockey define their existence on this planet. There are many ways to describe the experience of chasing a sport that you love with your brothers along for the ride with you. But in the case of junior hockey, it is simply called living the dream. It just takes some time to